Good afternoon, everybody. Sports Live in the ATL. David here, or good morning, or mid, whenever you see this. Road to 3K is in full effect. Again, continuously promoting my channel, getting out there to the sports people. Please click subscribe to uh, the channel. Click, click the uh, notification bell so you know when all the content is uploaded. I do games, premieres, breaking news, sports news, etc. Um, upcoming events scheduled, I do promote that as well. Uh, click the like button and share to your media outlets to get this channel about. Uh, first of all, just give an update again Wednesday, 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. on 92.3 FM. Your boy, Sports Live and ATL, will be live on the radio talking my channel. I'll tell you guys, I, I have worked really hard uh, all these years um, with my channel, putting up with a lot of stuff. And this right here is, is something that... Uh, I'm not going to say well-deserved. I'm humble, and I'm very appreciative to 92.3 and Latasha Givens for giving me this opportunity, her reaching out to me uh, to get on the show. It's something that, uh, like I said, I'm a sports fan. I love my teams, and I know everybody out there, all of us love our teams with passion, and uh, all of us would love an opportunity to get this opportunity. And I hope that all of y'all get opportunities uh, uh, to live your dream and to do what you want because this clearly is something for me, and it's also another way to promote my friends merch uh so a lot of us a lot of positives are involved with it and i'm really looking forward to the show uh on wednesday and you never know uh we already have an outline of what's going to happen on the show and but uh, she's going to allow me to do a few things and i'm getting some stuff together so i can't wait for that um also jj watt signing with the arizona cardinals jj watt former houston texans definitely hall of famer all pro a uh, pass rusher, formerly of the Houston Texans, played on a lot of underachieving teams up there in Houston. Now he goes to Arizona. And what floors this is that I was reading about and hearing about stuff all for like the last couple weeks. It was all AFC teams. So the Arizona Cardinals just got better. And to take just a little what if, if Thomas Dimitrov and his boneheaded self didn't overplay, overpay players like Desmond Trufant, Devontae Freeman, Vic Busley, and some of these other guys, we definitely would have made a play for J.J. Watt. See, this is what aggravates me. This organization throws money at the wrong people. Devontae Freeman didn't really make an impact. Desmond Trufant didn't really make a, an impact. Big Busley surely as hell didn't make an impact. Devontae Fowler on a one-year deal, whatever it is, two years, whatever, hasn't made an impact. We waste money. And then you waste opportunities to get a lot better. J.J. Watt would have been big on this defense. Trust me. I, like I said, I'm not a crystal ball kind of guy, but I would bet if the Falcons didn't overpay all these players through this year and we had plenty in the salary cap, we would have made a play. I'm not saying we would have got them, but we would have been in the conversation, and I'm pretty sure he would have looked at it. But, oh, no, this organization doesn't know how to spend money. And so now another team in the NFC that we might have to go through if we can get our act together and get back in the playoffs – we have to contend with somebody else. Makes me so angry. You know, it does. So, But J.J. Watt, good luck over there in uh, Arizona against the Cardinals. Uh, everybody in the NFC West is going to have some issues, as if they already haven't with some of the guys that they have over there. So, uh, Atlanta Hawks, wow. You, you, you guys cease to amaze me. I'm sorry, never cease to amaze me. Lloyd Pierce, you need to be fired, sir. Another close loss in a tight ball game in the fourth quarter. Every time, and I, I said this before, unless the Atlanta Hawks are blowing out opponents or getting blown out, you already know what's going to happen. In the fourth quarter, you're praying that the Hawks can start pulling away from a team because if they're close with the two or three or four, two or three minutes to go, they blow up. And I mean, they blow up looking bad. What are we doing after these timeouts, man? Coming out, I, I fighting your way back to a game you probably never should have been in. Because the Heat, after the late first quarter, just controlled this ball game. We had no defense. Interior defense stunk. The paint stunk. Our offensive shootings looked horrible. Control of the ball looked horrible. Thank God for John Collins for, for muscling his way and keeping us in the ball game. Clint Capella, you know, he's a big man. He makes his share of shots, but he missed an easy dunk and gets out-hustled under the boards by a smaller guy. I saw Miami Heat player get re of offensive rebound around underneath four Hawks and scoring. I mean, really, oh, my God. 
And then the, 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 the play calling with three minutes to go and less. We fight to tie the game at 99. And then with like three-something minutes to go, all of a sudden, we just throw the ball away, kicking basketballs, tripping, missing shots, playing no defense. It's just ridiculous. And that is coaching. You got Nate McMillan out there who I believe, I could be wrong, but from the little sample size that I saw and knowing him with the Pacers, why are we not having him coach? Lloyd Pierce should be fired at the All-Star break. And the thing is that I had high hopes for Lloyd because of what he did with the Sixers, but he clearly is not getting through to these players. Because a head coach is supposed to coach players and make them better. So clearly Lloyd Pierce is not that good of a coach because the Hawks make the same mistakes, game in and game out. We have lost 11 games where we have been tied or with the lead late in the fourth quarter. 11. Imagine what our record would be. Lloyd Pierce is supposed to fix this. That's what he's getting paid to do. He's getting paid to, to make the right calls, to put these uh, players in position on defense to make stops. They look like they're standing around there just like old folks. It's embarrassing. Are, are y'all watching what I'm seeing? I mean, they're not even they're not even contesting. And when they are contesting earlier, early in the game in first, second, and third quarter, they're having some good stops, but they can't capitalize. They look lost out there, especially in crunch time. Do you you want to be a playoff team, right? You wanna you wanna you know you wanna make some noise and, 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 and knock the stigma of Atlanta sports. Well, you're not doing it. You're just adding to the proverbial choke label that this city goes through year in and year out with all of its teams. It's it's mind-boggling to me. It's utterly ridiculous. What are y'all doing out there? Losing to teams below 500? And the premise going into the year was beating teams that you are capable of beating and should beat. And we have let so many get away. This record should be over 500. Thank God we play in the Southeast Division that stinks. Because that might be our only hope to get into the playoffs because we're like 11th right now. Granted, 11 to, to to 8 or whatever is separated by minuscule points, but we're just falling apart, man, in the, in the clutch. you got to win these close games, man. It's not like we're getting blown out a lot every now and then, but we are in these games. Lloyd Pierce could come on the press conference and say, we got to get better. I've heard this before with all my team. Can y'all stop? Either you can do the job or get out. It's the same thing, game in and game out. It's frustrating. I think I broadcasted four straight losses. Some heartbreaking losses, too, by the way. Just sad. We got Miami Heat on Tuesday, probably going to lose that one. And then we got Orlando on Wednesday, probably going to lose that one. My God, y'all. Too much talent on this team. Again, I hear DeAndre Hunter out and, and, um, and uh, Bogdanovich out. That's huge. You saw what happened when we had all these guys in. But didn't we sign these players who were supposedly able to play? Gallinari. I mean, look at what the Hawks' numbers are putting up. Trey Young is putting up numbers. Yes, he's inconsistent, and it aggravates me sometimes. John Collins is playing out of his mind. Clint Capella, despite missing shots, you know, he does hustle, and he keeps plays alive. Tony Snell's coming in, popping threes. Kevin Herter's up and down, but he's, he's a guy that clearly can stretch the court. Solomon Hill, when he's on, he's scoring. You know, we got a lot of youngsters coming in and making plays. We just can't close the game out. I'm not going to speak for other Hawks fans, but I'm not going to use that injury excuse because we are, have been in these ball games with with Bogdanovich and um, and with, with Bogdanovich and Hunter out. We miss them, yes, but we have been in these ball games to win. It's not a one-player or a two-player team. It's everybody on the roster has got to do their job, and the coaches have to do their job. Players down the stretch aren't doing their job, but the coaches aren't putting them in positions to, to, to make stops. It's like they're just drawing up, hey, guys, uh, Sandlot basketball. You just go out there and do your thing and hope you can stop these guys. What, what is the point of battling back in close games, getting your fan base up, just constantly let, let them down, and then you guys get upset when the media or when fans on Twitter – comment negative about y'all and you're like hey y'all aren't supposed to do that yeah we are because we're wasting our time talking about you we're broadcasting you we're buying the merchandise we're watching it on tv wasting electricity and when games were able to were open we were able to go to these games 
I remember I went to a lot of Hawks games with Kyle Korver and, and uh, you know, Paul Millsap a couple years back. Right? We have every right to speak on, on, on the failures of, of you guys and the positives. We have that right because before y'all played, y'all were fans. Y'all were embarrassing Atlanta as if we don't already have enough embarrassment already. Oh, my God, y'all. That was disgusting to watch. But anyways, we'll go for another helping. Excuse me, sir. Can I have some more? Excuse me. Can we have some more? Well, we're going to get some more on Tuesday night. And then on Wednesday, we're going to get a full helping of collapse and embarrassment. Just like a buffet table. Just put the restaurant up there that says collapse buffet Atlanta style. Come on in and enjoy yourself. Just makes me sick. Anyways, like I said, I didn't do a premiere today because I got things to prepare for the show. I got an upcoming unboxing I'm going to do, hopefully tonight, if not tomorrow. And uh, everybody have a great one. Again, I am working extremely hard and have been since 2009 to get op this opportunity that I have. And nothing, nothing is going to stop that. Sports Live in the ATL. I will see you in the next one. Hawks. Get it together.